Good afternoon. We start the debate HR for the regions. What and how should be taught at the time of change? My name is Alexei Komisarov. I am acting as a moderator of this session. Let me introduce the panelists first. Artem Zdunov, uh, acting head of Mordovia at Interim, Sergei Vorobyov, president and the founder of the Ward Howell Company. Uh, as well as a professor of the Ron Higgs Ranipa Higher School of Public Management. Mr. Nazarov, Prime Minister of Bashkartastan, and Michael Rozvajayev, Governor of Sevastopol, the city of Sevastopol, who will be with us online. Today the talk is rife about the fact that the world is undergoing a major change and the new requirements to the employees and the working conditions come to the fore. There's a great deal of uh, new goals in training and teaching and education, and that is quite a conservative field, trailing the change, lagging behind. But today we'll talk what workers and human resources will be needed for the regions of, of this country. We'll start the talk with Mr. Razvozhaev. I, I hope you can see and hear us well and clear. We can see you quite well, thank you for being with us online. My question to you would be, well, actually, the regional authorities look into the personnel training. Uh, is it only about the future workers for the public authorities and municipalities and regional authorities? Or do you also care for business workers? and employees. What are the main issues, according to you? What is your perspective? The slogan and the title of the forum says it's a post-pandemic world, but we are still within this pandemic. We are not out of the woods yet. How all that impacts the personnel training? I can see and hear you well and clear. I thank you, Mr. Komisarov, dear colleagues. Greetings from from the hero city of Sevastopol. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to attend your meeting in person, but I think it is of importance to speak up my mind. We are amid the pandemic, not in the post-pandemic stage. So this the span of time shows the importance, paramount importance of personnel training. You are quite right, Mr. Komisarov, delivering your uh, introduction remarks that public administration matters a lot and uh, all those challenges that we faced last year set forth new challenges to the public administration system and the pace of decision-making is a major challenge because we are living in the context of change and you could not apply any templates and previously approved schemes, although the public administration provides for clear cut planning and all of a sudden we had to assume responsibility and act off the cuff. Everybody, starting from the government, governor and vice governor and downwards to the lowest ranks and being the orderer of the personnel training programs and curricula and taking into account the curricula of the RENIPA, which is the alma mater of many of the public officers. So being the orderers now, we are trying to reshape our requirements because we cannot now act within the paradigms that had been approved previously. 
The centrally planned decision-making, which is one thing that probably is an extreme, another extreme is the uh, bottom-up decision-making. We need something in between. We need to see initiative at each and every level of the public administration, which is one of the takeaways of ours. As regards the need for personnel and the quality of personnel for the regions, what we need is people that will be able to reinforce the social and the economic spheres. In Sevastopol, we have defined the key development priorities in agriculture, it's wine making and vineyards development, as well as uh, shaping an IT cluster now. City. And uh, we also need to go digital and develop our IT sector because we don't have any mineral reserves. Another priority is the fishery cluster as we are a coastline city and uh, definitely we are translating that to the Sevastopol public administration uh, university with respect to the wine growing and wine making we have a priority project and we train personnel in this sector and all the professions are embraced by us to match the order of uh, of the regional authorities for the sake of the, national, uh, the regional economy and its development. We have been shaping our own requirements to future human resources and future professionals. In closing, I want to come back to the human resources for public administration. It's obvious that modernizing the public service we should build upon the principles of responsibility, emotional intelligence, decision-making skills, and swiftness in responding to the new challenges at all levels of the governmental and public administration machinery. And uh, last year, together with RENIPA, we carried out two events and came up with the curricula together with the governor's succession pool, who worked hard and uh, we added 50 more people to the, to the HR pool of our region as a result of last year's programs together with RENIPA. So these are the preliminary, preliminary conclusions with respect to training HR for regions. Thank you. Thank you. As a follow-up to your intervention, I have two questions. The first one, you have said that amid a pandemic, the public officers must be swift in decision-making, quick on the uptake. Is it something you may teach and learn, or is it about the makings? I think both of that. Primarily, we should be careful and attentive in selecting people, the proper people. And now, definitely, we are trying to bolster our HR potential. There are some of the inherent qualities and traits that predetermine human behavior. And we definitely will focus on these. But at the same time, we should provide correct and proper and pertinent trainings and education programs. And we should learn from our mistakes and from, from the developments. And we should be engaged in continuous HR advanced training. Build, building upon the experience that we gain. And second, you said that you are preparing uh, people together with the higher school of Renipa. You have been saying, well, everybody has been saying that the first-year students 
in five years may find out that their profession will disappear. Well, uh, we definitely plan for trying to plan for 2030 or at least till 2035. 2025. And uh, bear in mind the state of the art technology. We try to project the development of our city and we try to find out what the strong points of ours are and we build upon those. And uh, the forecasting and projection level of ours is decent, and I hope we'll be able to, to see uh, relevant professionals graduating. Thank you. I hope you will be online with us, because we may receive questions in the course of our roundtable. And I'd like to turn to Artyom Zdunov. Judging from what Mikhail has said and uh, judging by what uh, is the talk of the, of the day, that you cannot change things alone and the collective action will be successful. Do, do, do you have any difficulties in team building? I know that you had a lot of action of that kind in Dagestan, although it is not a, a, a simple region. So what is your current status on that? Thank you. It is a, an interesting question. I, I know that everybody has been facing that. Team means confidence, and that takes time to build and develop. Some people are swift to join the team and become a full member. Others take longer. It all depends on the circumstances. And Mikhail has noted that of late we have seen an acceleration. And uh, the teams, the project teams, should be set up quicker. We do have difficulties and challenges. Well, all those centrifugal forces, centripetal rather, forces that shape around Moscow and St. Pete, they attract lots of human resources from, from the province, from the regions. But the regions should maintain the high level of their team quality. And uh, definitely the public authorities should also maintain a proper level of quality. And I'd like those education programs when we mix up federal, regional and municipal public administrators and officers, when we commingle them all together. And add business community representatives. This would be a breeding ground for, for new champions. And uh, this is, I think, the most efficient approach. How to shape new teams. It's about uh, labor market supply and demand, I think. Today, we can see a lot of demand for professionals that know the second thing about uh, health care and medication supply and market specialists, marketing professionals, and oversight of marketing also matters a lot. So we definitely should match these needs. Besides, I must say that today we don't require many years of track record in management or administration. And let me name specific people. We have the World of Flowers company in Mordovia, headed by Mr. Boldrev, Alexander Boldrev, for more than 15 years. And he was a graduate in the uh, city economy major. 
And now he has been doing a specialized, a specialist business, a narrow niche one. So, and you asked whether we should forecast relevant professions in 10 or 15 years. Well, we cannot fully project that. Let me take, tell another, give another example. Uh, a poultry, poultry breeding company headed by a former countryside history teacher who has been able to get elected as a uh, as a regional lawmaker, and he has been able to retrain himself and acquire and obtain new skills. There is definitely some deficit in high-quality personnel. We can eliminate it by being in close contact with, with organizations and companies and scouting for professionals. In Dagestan and Mordovia, there is unemployment. At the same time, there is huge demand for jobs. But at the same time, major big enterprises face HR shortages. They lack professionals. One of the enterprises of ours turns out anti-COVID products, and they need they are in want of more than 100 people to add to their payroll. And uh, future workers must be incentivized to join this or that organization. Same refers to the agricultural processing companies. To attract people to come and work 20 kilometers away from their home, you should add some additional perks. So, on the one hand, we have unemployment. On the other hand, some many of the companies lack high-skilled and proper personnel. Another point that we should handle at the governmental, at the federal level, is as follows with the outflow of the migrants that used to work in construction who may face challenges in the sector. Just look at the professions occupied by the migrants. Those were probably military professionals related to the warfare, and now we probably should retrain our own workers, our own servicemen, so that they apply themselves in the civil sector. In the Republic of Mordovia, we will reconsider the vocational and secondary education programs. So narrow niche uh, knowledge is something you always can obtain while going through an advanced training program. And the, the requirements to the public administration workers should not be lower than in the, in the business community and environment. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is so good that you know the situation on the ground quite well and you cited lots of companies. But coming back to your team, whom do you prefer to hire? Those having the track record of public service administration or the business community uh, track record? Both have their pros and cons. How, how uh, you view these two categories? No doubt. It is uh, more profitable, more advantageous to employ well-experienced people, people with technical education, mathematicians, physicists. They uh, adapt very quickly. They're very disciplined. And in Tatarstan, in Dagestan, in Mordovia, we've been working with these people. But truth be told, if a person is educated properly, if he is good at what he does, then it's going to be fine because management is more of an art than a science and for thousands of years the underlying principles remain the same. So the most important thing about a team is trust and swift decision making and in that sense Mikhail is absolutely apt at saying that. At the very beginning you mentioned medics, doctors, so would you employ 
has the head of a healthcare system, a wonderful doctor, or maybe you can be a very good doctor, be very well versed in medicine and be able to cure people and still be incapable of managing the whole of the health care system because there are many issues there that are not directly related to medicine purely. There are things related to HR, managing people. Certainly, who we need at this post is a specialist in the organizational field. But our health care minister is a practicing surgeon, but of course, uh, managerial skills are of the utmost importance in this position. Thank you. Sergei, a question goes to you. I asked Mikhail about how exactly these people are to be dealt with, who are swift decision makers, uh, are they to be brought up and reared or are they to be found and employed? You've got a very big experience in building regional teams. So can you prepare a person that is going to be snatched away by heads of regions in your team building exercises? Well, uh, as Winnie the Pooh said, both things. Yes, there are people who simply won't make a decision, whatever you do. Selection as the basis of evolution is of the utmost importance. First, you've got to do the selection. And then in sports, whoever is selected, you still have to train, and the training has to be conducted properly. So first the selection, and then the training. So a huge thank you to the Academy of uh, Strategic Initiatives. I think it's going to be the sixth year in a row that we've been working with regional teams. And these are my favorite pupils. I'm not afraid to say that. I've always said that the public service is the ideal place to do some exploits, uh, do something heroic. But regional public service is even better than that in that regard. You know that, of course, uh, governors are powerful, but still there are municipalities with many powers, and there are federal representatives, and they all have to learn how to play together. And leadership and management always have to be put into context, not just what you teach, but also how. And the questions have been piling up for tens of years, but the COVID-19 has changed all of that. So you know this uh, K-shape graph. During a crisis, those who know how to work properly go upwards, and the rest go down. And this process has only been accelerated by the COVID pandemic, because everything is engulfed by uncertainty. And the digital technologies are sending all of that into an exponential trajectory. It has revealed everything, shown everything. Consultants like to simplify. That is why we've come up with a matrix of difficulty and pace. The pace has ticked up because of the uncertainty, the pace of the task you've got to address. The number has grown as well per unit of time. As a former physicist, thank you for the compliment. I've been thinking about that. What is the criterion of difficulty? A difficult task is a task you cannot solve on your own. And once it happens, you've got to rely on your team. And what does this team consist of? Of everyone. And it's not just horizontal cooperation, no. It's vertical, horizontal. It's in every dimension. If you don't know how to address a task, you've got to put everyone together. And this is the core skill, how to bring together a team that is going to play along, that is going to, to play together and help you overcome a difficult task. And this is the evolutionary path we've been pursuing over the last six years, and it's been great. So if the new norm is that all tasks are difficult and 
if they are becoming increasingly difficult, what are we to do? You know, I, I was taught at school that if you don't know how to solve difficult tasks, well, you'll have to do some menial labor, as my teacher used to tell me at school. But right now, the thing is, all tasks are difficult, and you always have to come up against them, and you also have to, to, to learn team spirit. And also working in a team is the best way to learn further. And who wins now? The current strategy is that he who learns the fastest wins the most. And this is the imperative the nature has shown it to us. And that is what we have to teach once uh, again, building a team. We, we have to do that at the highest level and at all other levels of leadership. And we've got to involve as many people as possible so that they would disseminate this practice further. So first, dozens of people and then hundreds of people. Yes, of course, so far, our teams are, are small so far, but we've got to reach this critical mass, like hundreds of uh, people. And digital technologies are a boon because they help us work online and if you work online you can learn online too and you can reach a never wider audience and I call this the R&D regime the regime of research and development as Socrates used to say well, the only thing I know is that I know little, and this is the motivating thing behind everything we do. We've got to learn as much as we know. Yes, any experience, any experiment implies errors, and our system is not that, you know, it doesn't look favorably at mistakes. Yes, that is a very good question. But the R&D regime requires and implies a shift of paradigm. So mistake is no longer a, mis uh, an, a foe, an adversary. It's a new norm of life. But of course, it's better if you can learn from your mistakes and make sure that you don't repeat the same ones again. But mm, mistakes are OK. And it is the conditions, public service in Russia and across the world has found itself in. So, Sergei, you, you, you mentioned some heroic deeds. And uh, yes, uh, it's been mentioned several times that public service is the best place for heroic deeds. But aren't you concerned that everything is only done through a heroic deed. Is there a task to teach public servants to work uh, routinely, like uh, uh, normally, uh, so that they don't have to mobilize all of a sudden when the deadline approaches, so that they don't have to, to do heroic deeds all the time to accomplish? Yes, thank you very much for pointing this out. Yes, uh, maybe I exaggerate a little bit. It's our national trait that we can only achieve anything through a heroic deed. Yes, let's let's uh, reformulate. It's the best place not for heroic deeds, but for medals, for learning and teaching. And of course, there are many people one can learn from others. Sergey, and the final question to you. You are the head of a program, and many teams from regional leadership are studying there. Almost all regions have gone through this program. Are there some specifics in uh, different regions, or maybe the approaches and the methods are the same, regardless of whether that is a team from the Russian Far East or from the central part of Russia, from the Caucasus, or guys from the region. 
So I love you because you are neither made of glass or of bronze. And uh, yes, there are specifics and these people, they are interested in learning. There are many problems they've got to come up against. They don't have uh, loads of money, they don't have automatic growth, and that is why they take a keen interest in this process. And that is the most important thing when people want to learn. And yes, recently we've been very active at the selection process. We've been sending and dispatching letters to governors, and we choose the most motivated. And it's, it's great when people learn how to fly, because they are truly motivated. Andrei Gennadievich, a question to you. It's the same. How do you cope with uh, team building, with uh, building a managerial a leadership team in your region? And a sort of a sub-question, who do you prefer? Do you prefer more experienced specialists or maybe younger people? Because there is a trend towards uh, employing increasingly young people. And unfortunately, we see that people who are lacking experience, they make more mistakes. But they, however, have fresh opinions, a new look. Those who are more experienced don't make as many mistakes, but they're not as progressive, not as willing to engage in experiments. So this, what is the approach you espouse? Thank you, Mr. Karmisarov. Well, to start with your sub-question, I think it's formulated great. If you prepare J a person or a public servant in a traditional manner for a very long time to make sure he or she becomes a mature manager, then during these two decades or so, this person loses creativity, initiative, and other things that allow us to arrive at a very good result because he, he knows where the red lines are, he knows that initiative can be punishable sometimes, and it stays within the box. Whereas if young people arrive at managerial positions from early on, they still manage to retain some creativity and this fresh mindset that is required to arrive at good solutions and accomplish goals. So a real team has to consist of both groups of people. They should be experts, and there are also people who are designed to show initiative and creativity, and there should be no imbalance. Due to the nature of my activities, I had to move from one team uh, from one city or town to another, and I also had to build a new team. And I built a team engaging more experienced experts who know the territory, the, 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 the city. And at the same time, and this especially relates to Moscow, to our capital, it means that these people reserve a certain part of their time for work, whereas people who you bring from the region, they devote ever more time to work. They have no time for the opera, for the theater. They devote themselves fully to their career to work, and they are willing to work a lot, to show initiative, to show creativity. And this also relates to experts, to new people who come. So when we build a team in Bashkortostan, we decided to revisit the old tool which we used to have. We, we had a system for strategic research and there was a, an open competition to, to get there and we, we had both experts getting in who are well versed in their fields and we also had people who are full of initiative and enthusiasm. And building these two elements and bringing them together helped us create a team which on the one hand accomplishes the goals, on the other hand 
comes up with creative ideas and solutions. So I would say that it's important to have a team that can work in a new paradigm and both knowledge as required on the one hand and initiative on the other. And this two-fold approach is very good at building teams. We know talented commanders and the armed forces who managed to make it to the top brass in a couple of years during a war. Of course, only talented ones managed to become truly great war commanders. So only talented made it to the top. And that's what we see, too, in uh, our selection process. So we have many promising candidates, but some are more talented than the others, and they grow faster. And what about the pandemic? Do you think the pandemic is like the war, and it reveals the worst qualities and the best qualities like the war does? You know, we built two in hospitals for uh, treating infections. How much uh, does it take to, to build a well, uh, a good hospital? Like a year for planning and another to, to, to build? Uh, we built two hospitals this time. It took us 52 days to build one and the other 50 days. It seems impossible, but people built those hospitals, and uh, several thousand patients have already been treated at those hospitals. Aren't you concerned that what we discussed with Sergei is going to become the reality you built it? Maybe they're good, but some time will pass and uh, procedures maybe have been broken and uh, you're going to be reproached for that in several years. Yes, I wanted to touch upon that too. A heroic deed in public service is very dangerous because if it's done with violations, with mistakes, the punishment will come and the price is going to be very high. So public service is no place for heroic deeds. You've got to work properly, you've got to accomplish the result without making a mistake. So it's a very delicate path, very difficult one to follow, but that is what you can do if you have the right team, if you've got well-versed public servants who know where the red lines are, and on the one, on the other hand, when you have uh, initiate, uh, full, people full of initiative, they're young, but yet they are also well-versed, that's what we managed to do, and that's how we managed to build those two hospitals. We ran the same processes in parallel. Sometimes it's a linear process. You, you do one thing, then another, and then another. And let's take the, the, the construction, the production of um, manufacturing materials, licensing. If you do it in a linear fashion, then it takes 18 months minimum. But if you run processes simply in parallel and you've got thousands of people working on one platform, one is uh, doing the landscaping, the other one is uh, building the walls, others are doing the ventilation and others are doing the certification, then it helps shrink the process. That's the same in the armed forces. There are many different elements participating in the process. One is doing the reconnaissance, uh, the one is doing planning, and so on and so forth. And the same here. So I cited these two hospitals were built during the pandemic. And we, we helped other regions. Uh, we were built a hospital for Chelyabinsk in uh, 74 days. Another outcome of this tool, you know, when we were built this tool back in 2006 uh, in Bashkortostan, I was the first to, to, to chair that tool that 
body and I came there from uh, private business. I was appointed and I think it was a very good uh, tool, this uh, strategic foundation. It was a very good tool to build teams. At the federal level, we've got the Strategic Initiative Agency, which does basically the same thing. Thank you, Andrei Gennadievich. We've got a chance to ask a question that, come, uh, that has come from the Internet. I've got a question for Artyom Alexeyevich from Irina Zlobina, from Izvestia of Mordovia. You are one of the first graduates of the Presidential Governors School. Have you thought at the graduation evening or night that you will become head of Mordovia Republic? Can you give an advice, a piece of advice to those youths that have not fulfilled themselves at home and flee the region? Well, probably uh, you should start with yourself, and now we have started shaping the HR or succession pool in our region. So my advice would be as follows. Please partake in that contest to fill in the positions in the, in the HR pool and acquire specific competences and look what goals are our priority and we'll work together with you. Just, uh, okay, thank you. I will now fire a quick question to all of the panelists and please provide a quick answer. Over the past difficult year, have you developed an idea what you personally are lacking and what skills and competences you would like to acquire. All of you keep training and learning continuously. But what is something, is there something that you lack? I think incident management is what we all lack. And the public authorities, officials, definitely must possess these skills. Quick on the uptake and quick to respond. This is what we should be. Michael. Alexei, I probably will say a queer thing, but I figured that you should learn to spare yourself and your people and your team, because we are no machines and we cannot work 24-7, but you know, you should spare yourself and uh, distribute the goals and tasks and duties and uh, a question was asked about uh, the first year, the first set of graduates of the presidential school. Well, we obtained a lot of theoretical knowledge, but what we all need is practical implementation. We should be knowledgeable in, in distributing the resources and uh, we should be able to run this marathon and keep being efficient. Andrei, I want to mention one thing. You cannot uh, prepare an event unless you walk all the way through for all the stages. This is also true for all other things. I will interrupt you because we, we don't have much time. Okay, you know, uh, we had a traffic jam in our region and we changed the sign, the road signs, and the traffic disappeared as a result of our visit on the ground. So you should look at the things on a case-by-case -case basis, and you should keep learning. Sergey, we keep learning what we teach. This has been my overarching goal over the past year. The Nobel Prize for 2019 was given for random experimenting in social matters and welfare issues, and the business community should learn to find proper formats that expedite sorting the problems out. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our time has elapsed. I would like to thank all the panelists for attending, spending their time intervening while answering this quick-fire question. 
you recapped much of what we discussed during the workshop. We have uh, multifaceted issues and problems, and uh, we should learn incident management, and we should be people-centric, and we all should develop stamina and keep running and moderate our resources. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you soon. And our forum continues. Meanwhile, thank you. Thank you.